Hey everyone, welcome back to Bagel TCG. Today we're going to be returning to our budget deck tech series. Um, this is actually one of my favorite kind of series. I really love the challenge of building on a budget, and I really love being able to show off budget decks to new players, especially ones that I think are at the highest level of competitive viability for the budget kind of genre of decks, right? So super excited to be back showing off budget decks. Uh, I think I actually did a kind of budget-ish dash deck uh, that was a boost dash deck. I think it was one of my first videos ever on the channel, um, but that was almost nine months ago, I think, and uh, the meta has changed a lot. There has been new cards added that she can play, um, a lot of new cards added she can play, especially from Everfest. And so the deck looks a lot different, and uh, I do think it is currently the strongest and cheapest deck you can play if you want to start playing Flesh and Blood on a budget. Um, it's also uh, probably the easiest, and um, yeah, the, the most you can get success with a easy, strong deck. So I think this is probably the most perfect budget deck we've ever had. It is at the precipice of easy, powerful, and cheap. So um, yeah, really hyped that we have this deck I can show you. Uh, before we jump into that though, as always, shout out to our sponsor, Whoopdom Wizard. You can use the affiliate link in the description um, for 5% off all box breaks and support the channel. They've got great deals, great shipping, um, everything like that, and my Patreon. I put out bonus videos after every video uh, if you're on the second or third tier of my Patreon. Um, those bonus videos, like for example this video, will be a much more in-depth video as I talk through all of the sideboard choices, all of the things you can do, everything you can do to upgrade the deck, etc, etc. Um, just kind of a longer form content, it's more rambly and podcast style. Um, but let's hop right into the deck tech here. So we have Dash. Um, Dash is kind of a hero that is always just okay, or a little better than okay, right? She's like a consistent six or seven out of 10 hero. Um, but I think with Starbo leaving, um, with Chain leaving, uh, she had a, a not great Chain matchup in and in a maybe slightly better, but still not great Starbo matchup. Um, I think in Uprising, uh, Dash is actually gonna be quite good. Um, so I'm excited to, honestly, I played some boost Dash at an Armory myself uh, like two weeks ago and ended up going undefeated um, went 4-0 out of the four rounds on basically this exact list with maybe five or six cards different. Um, just a little more of the the money cards, but really, it's almost this exact list. Like most of the time, I was on like 58 of out of the 60 cards that I, I'm showing you here. So very very powerful deck and actually really fun to play. Just if you like an aggressive powerful deck. Um, so since this is a budget deck, I am going to read through the cards a bit more since. Uh, hopefully newer players will be looking at this. Um, you might not know the cards as much. So starting off, we have our hero, Dash. She is a Mechanologist hero. She has the classic 4 intellect, 40 life. And she has the hero ability that says you may start the game with a Mechanologist item with cost two or less in the arena. Um, so we are playing three different, four different items, I guess, but you're not going to pick from all of them. Um, three different items that have cost two or less. So we have Induction Chamber, Plasma Purifier, and then the newest card from Everfest here, we have Teclo Pounder. Um, Teclo Pounder kind of allows us to be this very aggressive deck. Um, so we can start with any of those in play. We are typically going to choose to either start with a Teclo Pounder in play or an Induction Chamber in play. Um, and that comes out of your 60 card deck. So you will have 60 cards that you show your opponent and then you will take one out before the game starts and put it um, in play. So you will actually have 59 cards um, in your deck and one item in play at the beginning of the game. So. Pretty nice there, gives you a bit of a thinner deck and uh, some big power on the board. That is one of Dash's biggest advantages, at best, especially as an aggressive deck, is that she kind of starts with some power already on the board. Um, let's hop into the loadout though. We have her classic weapon here, Teclo Plasma Pistol. Uh, it attacks for two. Uh, you can pay a resource to load it essentially. Um, once per turn, you put a steam counter on it, and then to attack with it, you remove a steam counter from it. Um, kind of classic weapon, can shoot for a ton of damage because we have a lot of uh, items that we put on the board that will boost its damage. We have her legs, which are Achilles Accelerators. Um, these have Arcane Barrier 1. You can also add instant speed, destroy them to gain an action point if you've boosted this turn. This can be really strong. Um, we can play an extra item at the end of turn. Um, we can boot. We can get an extra pistol shot in. Uh, we can do a lot of um, powerful things here, gaining that action point, especially using Spark of Genius. Uh, our arms are Goliath Gauntlet. Um, these basically, uh, as an action, you destroy them, and then your next action card with cost two or greater gets plus two, and then go again. 
this is great. It's basically like starting with two damage on board immediately. So your opponent's kind of at 38 life when you have this out, right? Um, not literally, because obviously you haven't hit them with it yet, but you are starting with just two damage for free on the board at the start of the game. Similarly, we have Heart and Cross Strap. Um, this is two free resources on the board, so you can destroy this, and then your next action or next attack action uh, costs two less to play, and then go again. So, in combination, we can play a free two cost card with plus two power. Um, you don't need to play them in combination, but uh, they're both kind of similar effects, but both quite strong. Two free resources on board and two free damage. Um, and then our headpiece here is Viziotronic Model I. Uh, it has Arcane Barrier two. Um, which gives us a pretty strong equipment suite against wizards doing arcane damage. We have total of arcane barrier 3. Um, and then also has the action of destroying it. And whenever you boost this turn, you draw a card and then put a card from your hand on top of your deck. Um, this kind of just lets you sort through as, you, as you're as uh, you boosting. Um, you can boost away cards you don't want and then draw new cards. Uh, usually, you know, this is just kind of for like a bigger turn when you're trying to, to do a lot of damage. Um, but pretty cool equipment suite, pretty simple. Uh, we're not running you know, any more than just these four armor, and they should do basically everything you need. Um, that's one of the big pros of Dash is that she has very flexible armor. Now let's hop into the deck. So almost all of the deck is boost cards. So let me zoom in here. We'll read one of these boost cards. So boost, for example, this combustible courier says, as an additional cost to play this, you banish the top card of your deck. If that top card you banished was a Mechanologist card, it gets go again. So you'll attack with the card with boost, you'll banish the top card of your deck, and if that card was Mechanologist, this attack gains go again. Um, our whole deck is Mechanologist, so you're never going to miss, and uh, that means that your attacks will all always have go again. Um, the downside is that you go through your deck pretty fast, which means if you're not killing your opponent fast enough, you're going to run out of cards because you're banishing your deck. So we've got to be pretty aggressive, we've got to make sure we deal a lot of damage, and uh, kill them before we get rid of all of the cards of in our deck. Um, we have a lot of cards that are just, just say boost. They just deal damage, right? So we've got all nine of throttle, zero to 60, and zipper hit. These all just say boost, and then they block for three, and then they deal some amount of damage. Um, we've got some cards that are like a spicy boost, right? So we've got combustible courier. It also has boost, but when it hits, your next attack you boost this combo chain gets plus three. Um, we've got T-Bone that says boost, and if you control a card on the combat chain that was boosted, the defending hero must defend it with an equipment they control if able. So we've got some cool boost effects. Um, we have a few boost cards that when they hit, give your next, uh, your next attack dominate that you boost, um, like high speed impact and pedal to the metal. Um, and then we've got some big payoffs. So our two biggest payoffs in terms of boosting is maximum velocity and overblast here. So let's, let's zoom in on, on these two cards. So maximum velocity here says uh, you can only play that card. You can only play this card if you have boosted three times already that turn, right? at least three times. But then it comes in for 10 damage for only two resources. So this card does a ton of damage. Um, it just asks you to do a lot before. right? It says you have to boost, boost three times, which usually means that you have to have a five card hand, meaning that you need a card in Arsenal already. And then you have to have probably three zero cost boosts altogether, right? So you zero cost boost, zero cost boost, zero cost boost. Then you pitch your last card to play maximum velocity. So that's five cards right there. Um, it definitely requires a very specific uh, lineup of zero cost boost um, attacks. But we have, you know, at least 15 right here. We've got all nine of these zero costs, all six of these zero costs. Um, and we can still use one zero cost or one one cost boost in there, I should say. Um, because if we're pitching a blue, we'll have an extra floating um, and then we can still play maximum velocity. So uh, a combination of two zero cost and one one cost boost in a blue, we can play this for just a ton of damage. Um, our other uh, payoff card here is Overblast over on the side. This one also costs two, and it gains plus X power, where X is the number of times you boost it. So this one doesn't have a requirement to be able to play it. So this one's a lot easier to get off, um, for sure, a lot easier to get off, but does less damage, right? So if you boost it twice, you can you, even if you've only boosted once, you can play this and it'll attack for uh, six because it'll it'll have boosted once. Um, the important thing to note is that neither of these cards have boost, so they, they don't have go again. There's no way to give them go again. Um, your best option if you want them to be able to uh, have kind of go again is to use our cards like high octane to gain extra action points or our boots here to gain an extra action point. Um, but normally that they're, they're at the end of the combat chain and you won't need to worry about that anyways. Um, outside of that, uh, I do have in the notes here, 
the different matchups um, and what you can do for each matchup. Uh, so namely the, the main board right here, if you're looking at this, this is for like most times when you're playing against other aggro decks. Uh, this is kind of your standard deck here. Um, but we have some cards in the sideboard that we can bring in for certain matchups. Um, for example, we've got all of these items here. Um, these are really slow to set up. Uh, they cost two resources, they don't block at all, and they're reds, and they don't have go again. There's a lot of a lot of things. They're really, really slow, and if you're playing against another aggro deck, um, you're just going to die if you draw them. I mean, they don't block even, uh, and they just, they're just they really bad against other aggro decks. But against control decks that are a lot slower, for example, like a Guardian, if you're playing against an Oldham, for example, these cards are great. Oldham is only attacking you for four a turn off with their weapon. Maybe sometimes have big attacks, but usually um, smaller attacks with their weapon. You can set up these powerful items um, and be able to do some huge damage with your pistol. This one gives your pistol plus one, and this one lets you attack extra times with your pistol. So really good against uh, against those matchups. Um, we've got some blues here. Blues are really important to have extras of against wizards, especially. And then um, for for uh, some decks, like Illusionist will want this extra maximum velocity because it does pop Phantasm. Um, and we've got some Disillusion Spheres here. Uh, honestly, I put these in because I had two extra spots in the deck. I don't think we're going to use them most of the time, but maybe you could uh, try them out against um, any kind of Rune Blade deck, dealing some extra damage uh, in one, one point each. Um, but I don't know. You could really make this whatever you want. I would probably try to keep it a Mechanologist card. Um, but there's kind of some extra two slots here, uh, and you're not really locked on what these two slots have to be. Um, but yeah, this is this is the deck. I think it's quite powerful. Um, not only is it quite powerful, but also it's quite cheap. Let's actually look here. So this is the, the, the link here. You can click buy deck. Um, I don't get anything from you doing it this way, but uh, if you go and buy any of these cards on Whipped and Wizard, I will uh, get something. So I definitely appreciate if you support the channel that way. Um, but if you go on TCG Player here, you can see before optimizing, it says 129, but we're going to click optimize cart. I always turn off keep current printings because I don't know, sometimes that will mess stuff up. Um, their optimization can be kind of weird sometimes, but it's kind of the fastest way just to check the price of a deck. And then we see um, 103.41 here. So that looks like that's probably going to be the total before tax. Um, that includes shipping though, so maybe five, ten dollars tax on top of that. Um, and then as always, their optimization does add some weird stuff in here that shouldn't actually be something you need to pay for. Um, it's mostly right. I think it sometimes adds in like the weapon. Like this weapon, it's saying the weapon's $2, but this is a token that you can get from any store, any card shop that has flesh and blood for free. So it's kind of $3 that you shouldn't actually need to spend. That you should this uh, That's a free card. So the deck is actually $100 basically um, before tax. Uh, really cheap compared to a lot of flesh and blood decks that can hit like $1,000 or get close to it. Um, so really good deck to start out on. It's going to win you armories. Honestly, this deck will, I, 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 I promise you, maybe promise is a strong word, but I promise you, if you practice this deck and you get good at dash, you will win armories or top four armories with this deck. The, the boost version, this main board version right here just outputs so much damage. Um, and you're just going to run some people over with damage, boosting them down into the ground. So I think this is definitely the strongest, the easiest, and the cheapest deck in the format right now. Um, this is already set up for Uprising, so uh, it's not taking into account Chain or Starvo, um, and they will be here in the US at least until July 1st still, I think, so uh, I guess keep an eye out for that. Um, you might want to change some cards uh, and still think about Starvo and Chain, but this is uh, already built for Uprising, um, and for other parts of the world that Uprising comes out in four days, it'll be ready for you then. So. Uh, super excited to play Dash. Obviously, we're all super excited for the Uprising Heroes, and I will have deck text for them as well. Um, but there is not uh, as budget versions for those heroes for sure. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.